Is that two points dropped rather than a point gained? I felt we uh, had the bigger chances to win the game, definitely. So, uh, uh, decent performance, good defensively. Uh, two massive chances second half from good crosses, good play. Unfortunately, wasn't there to, um, to be in between the posts. As simple as that, you just didn't take your chances. Was everything else right? I felt we uh, had a good performance, yeah. You come away with uh, the share of most of the possession, the bigger chances. There was a spell, 10-15 10, minutes second half, I felt we, we dropped off a little bit too much and we give them chances to shoot, which we, we were a little bit passive, but apart from that, I, I'm pleased with the boys. You had to make a change for Scott McTominay in the first half. You decided, yep. rather than going like for like, perhaps with Matic, to change it to bring on anti Martial. What was your thinking there, and was it influenced by the way the game was panning out at that point? I felt we, we had the upper hand and uh, we didn't really get Paul into the game the first uh, half an hour and we wanted him to uh, to get on the ball more and Anthony to uh, drive at them so, but um, and he created a good chance for uh, for Eddins in the second half there Anthony with with Lou good good play to be fair so uh, now we wanted Paul to uh, to dictate play more what's your thoughts on just one point from a possible six the last couple of games uh, it's definitely uh, what day was it? You, you, you forget the day, it's Wednesday, Wednesday night. Uh, that was a disappointing one. Uh, today you come away with a good performance. I feel I feel they did what they should do. You, sometimes you can't control, you know, if you take the chances or not. Of course, they had a free kick, they hit the bar. So it can go either way. It swings, uh, swings uh, quickly in this game. You set a new club record. That's 18 away games unbeaten. Oh, yeah. Is that much consolation today? No, not really, no. But... Uh, we just take this point, move on. It's Tuesday, Southampton again. It's like uh, NBA season. This travelling on the road, uh, on the road again. Thank you, Oli. Cheers. When the treble, like these boys did, actually, and you were, more, he was more disappointed they didn't win the treble than the fact that you, you got the double. That was the standards. Why isn't there that desperation at the end that Paul's talking about then from this group of players? Do you feel? Whether it was what happened against Sheffield United, I don't know. But I thought actually both teams looked like they played, played for that result in a way. I thought they both sat off each other. What, 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 what good is a point to either team? Nothing. It's, it's not good for Nothing, either, really. Yeah. Arsenal, what, they're, still, they're in eighth now. They were ninth before. So really, I know that they're, what, six points off top four. So that maybe they're just thinking let's chip away. But I think for United, a couple of weeks ago, they were top of the league now. All of a sudden now that gap to City plus City have a game in hand, plus they have better goals. That's what could potentially be six points with the, goal, with the goals at seven. So all of a sudden being top, that gap now to City and they're flying City. So um, it's, I think for both teams, it was in, in a way it was a must-win game. And I think they just showed each other too much respect. I understand Arsenal play the way they do because they're missing a lot of big players, important players. It's okay for them to play on the counter, you know, and, and have less possession. But I thought for United, I think at times... Top big players have saved them this season, haven't they? Whether Bruno Fernandes or Rashford or Pogba or Cavani. But today, they needed a special moment from someone and it just, you know, they, they didn't get it. Is that fair what Paul's saying, that the big players will be judged in those big games when it's fine margins? Well, the only reason you're a big player is because you do against the big teams, the best teams. You know, anybody can play against, you know, the small teams. The best players show up on the biggest occasions. And that's when you need somebody to kind of drag you across the line. You think about, you know, the great United teams, the players that they had that did that, you know, the Thierry Henry's that did it for, for Arsenal. You, know, you need somebody in a big game to step up and go, right, put it on their shoulders and drag you across the line. And that game was there to be won for both teams. It was. And uh, it really just felt like they both were happy with, with the draw. I, I think it's a mentality thing as well at, at times. I think... We, we, look at, we look back at our team, if we didn't win a game, we were devastated. You know, really disappointed. Whoever we played against, whether it was Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, any of the great teams, we weren't happy. I get the impression watching that, they, they're quite happy with the point. You know, that, that's where they're at. We've come off the game, we've not really thrown everything forward. We've, have, have we really come away from that game trying to win that game? I, I, I can't see evidence of that. They've had two great chances, don't get me wrong, and they should have won, they should have won the game saying all that. But where's the desperation? Where's the throwing, throwing people forward? Where's getting five strikes on the pitch, which is what Sir, Sir Alex would have done? Mm. A, you have to, to play for Man United, you need to have a winning mentality. And I just think they settled for a point there. And that tells me, rather than being a team that wants to win the league or is capable of winning the league, it looks like a team who will be happy with top four.
Wait and see if we get a basketball like <laughs> game on Tuesday. Now you're talking about uh, standards, Paul. This is Bruno Fernandes on the full-time whistle. Um, we know he's a winner. He doesn't hang around for the manager's handshake for any of the Arsenal players. He's down the tunnel. Mm. He's, well, well, what's he doing? He's sulking because, look, to, to be fair, he hasn't really had one bit of an effect on the game. Well, what's his problem? It, it, that, that's the only thing he can possibly be disappointed with. He can't be disappointed with... Well, he can be disappointed with the result, but his, 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 contribu his contribution to affect the game was non-existent, really. So that's the only thing he can be disappointed with. Well, I think, I mean, it's been, what, a year since he's been there and he's probably one of the biggest impacts of any player probably in Premier League history in terms of goals and assists there. And I think we saw it against Sheffield United. He had a pretty quiet game there. Well, can I just tell you, in the last five Premier League games, he hasn't scored a goal or assisted. Well, it? that's probably where his frustration is because I think his numbers have been so off the charts that we're comparing them to some of the greatest players in the history of, of the Premier League, whether it's Cantona or in terms of the impact in a year. And it's been quiet for whatever reason, you know, in terms of those numbers and I think he's probably frustrated at the fact that he's not having that impact and United really Liverpool that you know that United were in such a good position they could go on and win the league now Liverpool are back are back in this title race so I think he's pro he probably realizes that walking off that it's a missed opportunity Sheffield United was a missed opportunity can't even can't even lose that game never mind joy um, and then to not get the result today against a weakened Arsenal team I think he's probably just disappointed because he's he's the one that seems like he's he's the driving force yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Win for Steve Bruce from Newcastle away at Everton. Another narrow one for Palace at home to Wolves, Manchester City. 12 consecutive wins in all competitions for the first time in their history. They lead the Premier League, they beat Sheffield United. Big game at the bottom ended all square between West Brom and Fulham. Another draw between Arsenal and Manchester United. Stay with us because Aston Villa's trip to Southampton is still to come today. And four games, of course, for you tomorrow, including the champions Liverpool at West Ham and Spurs after that going to Brighton. So good day all round for Manchester City. Three points themselves, just one for Manchester United. So a three-point gap for Pep Guardiola's side. And they have a game in hand on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side. Arsenal up to eighth on 31 points. So no points today for Sheffield United. One for West Brom, one for Fulham. Fulham still four from safety with Brighton above them. And now there's another four-point gap. That because of Newcastle's win at Everton.